this, um, this text, you've heard this text, so I'm not going to say anything new, and I'm going to give you a brief message just to, to uh, whet our appetites, both for food but for the Holy Spirit. Because the church loves to hear the story of Pentecost. Why? Because it's the birthday of the church, and we love celebrations, and we do celebrate. We, we celebrate this day which the Holy Spirit fulfilled God's promise that Jesus said in John 14... God will send the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, to teach you everything. Words of Jesus to his disciples and to all the church. That was in John, and then in Acts, Luke tells us what happened. On that day, somehow in the form of fire and wind, you, you even see like this stole has the, the wind, as the Holy Spirit, and the fire. These are the ways that the, they symbolize the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And of course, we're celebrating what happened on that day. And, and we celebrate, that's 2,000 years ago. We celebrate 60 years ago. We celebrate today with an ordination installation of officers, with the honoring of all these people here, enjoying our fellowship together. It's a celebration that we've been preparing for for months. And so I want to start with a very deep theologian, and that's John Calvin. Well, actually, it's not John Calvin. It's Calvin and Hobbes. But you know, that's, he's named after John Calvin, and Hobbes is named after the great English philosopher Thomas Hobbes. So that's why it's uh, so deep and, and meaningful to us. The Calvin and Hobbes has always been one of my favorites. And so one of the cartoons that I, I've shared before and I love is that um, one day Calvin and Hobbes come down and they're marching into the living room and over to the side is their mother sitting in her favorite chair, sipping her coffee, and then amused at the costume that Calvin has on. She sees how he's dressed with a large space helmet on his head. He has put a blanket on his back like a, a cloak, a cape, and it's down on the ground dragging behind him. And in his hand is a bat, and in his other hand is a flashlight. What's up today, Calvin? Nothing. So far. So far, asks his mother. Well, you never know. Something could happen today. And if anything does, by golly, I'm ready for it. And then Calvin's mother looks into the reading audience and says, boy, do I need a suit like that. <laughs> Something could happen today. And so let's be ready for it. And on this special Pentecost celebration, something could happen. We could experience God's Spirit in a powerful new way in our lives. We could encounter deeper spiritual fellowship with brothers and sisters in Christ, some of whom we haven't seen for years and years and can have a time of fellowship together. We could feel our hearts being set on fire and the breath of God filling our souls. So how should we celebrate such a wonderful time and a splendid day as this, commemorating this indwelling, our 60th and and Pentecost itself. Well, let me give you two thoughts. One is remembering. Remembering what happened on that day of Pentecost. So go back 2,000 years as Dr. Juarez read the scripture. Everyone is gathered in one place, somewhere in Jerusalem. They're gathered there. They've come to celebrate the Feast of Pentecost. That was a, a Jewish holiday, Feast of Weeks. It was very common. They've come to celebrate and without warning, there is a wind like a gale, and, and they don't know where it's coming from, but it's filling the whole building. And then like a wildfire, this wind-like spirit spreads through their ranks, and people start talking in different languages prompted by the Holy Spirit. And these Jews, these devout pilgrims in town for this festival, they start questioning what is going on. 
And Peter, backed by the other 11 disciples, he speaks with bold urgency and he uses the prophet Joel and he uses the scripture to help people understand what's going on. And the sermon was so powerful and the spirit was so powerful that 3,000 people were baptized on that day and came to faith in Jesus Christ. That's what happened 2,000 years ago. Remember, why Pentecost is the birth of the church. It's our faith communities and how we celebrate today nothing less than the arrival of the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. How powerfully the Spirit has acted through the years and life of the church. How strong the witness of the church has been throughout history and how it's still changing lives through modern miracles and reaching out to others. And then we remember how 60 years ago, in this community, how we're celebrating, how 148 people signed a commitment of faith to begin a new church. And seven of those members, still charter members, that have seen so much who, who we honor, but also who we try to understand better what were they thinking would happen 60 years from that day. There were 26 acres on this hill that were bought, and 14 were sold a few years ago to the Presbyterian Senior Living. And I remember being with George Kelch, and George said, this has brought us full circle, because when we bought that land in 1958, we dreamed of having a retirement center. And then we sold it to Presbyterian Senior Living. And George Kelch was exuberant about the fulfillment of the dream of the original charter people. Peter quoted Joel when he said, old people would dream dreams. And that's what we're doing today. We're dreaming dreams of what was then and has happened now and what we're dreaming and will be in the future. And so yet, no matter how impressive are all those things that we can remember of 2,000 years ago and, and 60 years ago, it really constitutes a small portion of what Pentecost is all about. Luke is far less concerned with the Holy Spirit's awesome arrival than he is with the way that the disciples respond to the Holy Spirit. So you have remembering, which is looking back, and you have responding, which is looking forward. It's like I've said before, how you swing is you lean back and you kick forward. And both motions are needed to move a swing. We're remembering what took place, but we're responding to the Holy Spirit. And that's the second way that we will celebrate Pentecost. How will you respond to the wonderful indwelling of the Holy Spirit? We remember that Pentecost, what the, it, what the Holy Spirit did for these frightened disciples, meeting behind closed doors, afraid to the point that they were going out throughout the world. And they have changed the world for Jesus Christ because of the power of the Holy Spirit. They became power players. They became proclaimers of the gospel to share their faith even unto death itself. They were responding to the winds of the Holy Spirit, moving their lives, allowing that Spirit to blow them in whatever direction that they felt God's calling. That was the same response, I think, that this small group of people had 60 years ago. The birth of this church was a bunch of young dreamers who soon had this place, this light on the hill is what they called it. And they talked about it being a light in the community of Lancaster. These first Highlanders responded to the challenge of their times, and they we're inspired by God's faith to reach out and to grow this church. And do you know this church reached almost 2,000 people at its, at its apogee, at its highest membership? We're about 1,100 members plus right now. But Bruce Hallren shared a very interesting statistic. He's Mr. Presbyterian to us. 
He said over 7,000 people in those 60 years have been influenced and claim Highland as part of their community of faith. Isn't that an amazing statistic of people who have come in the door and out the door from those 148 dreamers of what Highland would be? 7,000. God's interest is always in our response, the application of faith in our lives. What we do about it is always more important than just hearing about it or knowing about it or even believing it. Believing in God is one thing. Responding to God's love, pouring out to other people is another. Knowing what God's Word says in Scripture is one thing, but living it day by day in your life and showing how much you love Jesus Christ is another. Hearing the good news of Jesus Christ is one thing, but accepting it in your heart as, as your personal Lord and Savior is another. Just as God's Spirit breathed into His disciples the Spirit of life, we need to allow God's Spirit to blow into our lives this day. Fill our lives with your Spirit, dear God. And not just that is in us, but something that then issues from us to others. We are literally inspired, breathed into with God's Spirit to be transformed for Christ's sake, and to dream dreams is a community of faith. And as our very new vision statement says, which all of you will have to proclaim if you'd like, it's a car magnet, it's on your seat outside, it's Highland Presbyterian Church. And the new vision statement adopted by the session is connecting you with Christ and culture. Remember our strategic plan? Connecting you with Christ. That's that spiritual nurture that we talked about was a high priority. Connecting you with the community is the mission outreach, which was the other high priority of our strategic plan. Something could happen at Highland today, so let's be ready for it. Remembering what took place 60 years ago of ministry and mission for six decades and responding to the ways, the new ways, that the Holy Spirit will call all of us and this community of faith called Highland for years to come.